Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. Have you ever felt depressed? What a foolish question. Who has not? But the depression we are concerned with here is an unhappiness that seems to descend from nowhere, enshroud us for no apparent reason, and plunge us into a despair as to who we are, what we are doing here, and why we are doing it. Even whether we are alive and awake or simply asleep and dreaming, the whole strange and sorry affair. Why did you come here? What? What do you think you'll find here you couldn't find someplace else? Why, I, um... There's nothing here, you know. Absolutely nothing. But that's what appeals to me. The absence of everything. That's what I want. A place where there's... nothing. If that's what you want... You got it. Our mystery drama, Waking and Sleeping, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Michael Tolan. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Have you ever felt that there must be a beautiful life that you are not leading a wondrous world you cannot see, a peace and contentment that have somehow eluded you, and have you wondered where the fault lies? Is it with you? Or is there no such life, no such world, no state of being, no peace or contentment anywhere at all? I suspect both things are true in part. The whole truth lies somewhere in between. Things were getting worse. Walking purposefully into a room only to find myself ignorant as to why I'd entered it. Talking animatedly to a friend. Then losing my train of thought and having to fumble my way out. I thought I must be having a nervous breakdown. And I decided to go off somewhere by myself. To think, to set myself straight. Not an original decision, I grant you. One which many have made before me. And as you will soon see... One of the stupidest decisions a person can make. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Yes? Is this you? I, uh, I beg your pardon? This piece of paper, you write this? Oh, oh, yes, 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 I did. Found it tacked up on the wall of the saloon. Yes, well, I, I can explain that. I, I had thought to put an advertisement in the newspaper, well, we but We got I... no newspaper in Ungerville. Yes, I found that out. But I, I thought perhaps there was one in some nearby town or city. And nobody in Ungerville reads a newspaper. So I was told by the bartender. D- did you come to answer this, uh, this piece of paper? Well, it says there you need somebody to do some housework. Yes. I, I find I can't manage it by myself. Nobody around here does housework. Oh. You, you're sure there's nobody would be willing? I, I can afford to pay rather well. Everybody in Ungerville works for self, not for others. That makes it rather awkward, doesn't it? You buy this old house? No, I, I rented it. Well, if, if you're not interested... It's a big old house. Yes, yes, it is, rather. It was the only place I could find. Nobody's lived in it for years. I know. Can't think why you'd want to. Well, let's just say it appealed to me. Living here all by yourself? That's what you plan on doing? Yes. Uh, if you should by chance hear of someone who... I like... won't hear of anybody. Oh, well, then I won't, I won't keep you. Thanks for... Of course, for... there is my husband. Uh, I beg your pardon, you said your husband? He's pretty handy around the house. Would he be willing? If I tell him to, he'll be willing. 
Well, I'd certainly appreciate any help I can get. Well, you see, he crippled himself a few years back, drove a pitchfork into his own leg, so he's no good for farm work anymore. But I guess he could shuffle a broom around here. If you'd pay him right. Oh, I, I would, yes. I, I'd be glad to. He'd be slow, but he'd be thorough. No, I'm sure he'd work out fine. I ought to tell you he's a trifle on the weird side. Oh, well, listen, aren't we all? Well, I don't mean he's dangerous or anything like that. He's just weird. Ever since he stabbed himself with a pitchfork, he's been weirdish. But if you want him... Oh, I do. Yes, I, I, I do. I, I need someone. Well, so I'll tell him. He'll be here tomorrow morning. Well... Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm I'm sure he and I will get along splendidly. Well, that remains to be seen, don't it? Yes, I... I suppose it does. Now, I thought. Now I will settle in and start putting myself to rights. Resolve the chaos in my head. Reach an understanding of my misery. Once this big old house was in order free of the clutter of unwashed dishes, balls of dust, and, and layers of grime. Then and then only could I set about restoring myself to myself. So I was wide awake, washed and shaved, when the woman's husband knocked at the door. Uh, yes, yes, I'll be right there. Oh, good morning. G good morning. C come right in. Uh, come, sit down. I'm, I'm glad you could make it. I, uh, I'm assuming you're the husband of the lady I spoke to yesterday. Uh, am I right? <laughs> well, yes, I thought as much. Well, I, uh, I, I live alone. My, my tastes are very simple. I mean, I wouldn't be having any guests or, or parties or anything like that. But I, I do need to live in a clean place. I, I can't stand a mess of any kind. Do you, do you know what I mean? Do you? I know. It's it's just a question of keeping the place reasonably clean and, and my clothes in some kind of order. Uh, I don't suppose you'd want to cook a meal now and then. I could. Oh well, well say now that that's that's fine. That's just fine. It it needn't be anything fancy. I I happen to like very simple food. Uh, a chop and a baked potato. <laughs> I uh, I think I can manage my own orange juice and coffee for breakfast, and I'd I'd probably take luncheon out somewhere. Uh, Ungerville does have a restaurant of some sort, doesn't it? There's a diner. Oh, well, some diners are very good. I've eaten in a few that were really excellent. Uh, is, is this a, a good one? I've never been in it. Oh. Well, I'll just have to take my chances, won't I? Uh, so, it, it, it's all settled. Or, or is there anything you want to ask me? Any, any questions? Why are you here? What? Why did you come here? Why did you take this house? What do you think you'll find in Ungerville you couldn't find somewhere else? Why, I, um... Ungerville's a ghost town. There's nothing here. In a way, that's what appeals to me. This absence of anything distracting. Used to be a tin mine here. But that wore out and closed down 50 years ago. Now there's nothing. But that's what I want. A place where there's nothing. Well, you got it. You see, I... I simply got to a point in my existence where I couldn't see the sense of it. Does that sound foolish to you? No. I couldn't... I couldn't continue... Uh-huh. There's a poem. <laughs> but you wouldn't know about that. Hmm? Why wouldn't I? It's by Wordsworth. Ever hear of him? Yes. It goes, if, if I can remember it, it's been a long time. <laughs> the world is too much with us. Late and soon, getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Something like that. Little we see in nature that is ours. That's it. Yes, that's it. We have given our hearts away. A sordid boon. You know it. Why shouldn't I know it? Why, no reason, I guess. I just never... <sighs> well, anyway, I, I started to think... 
All this getting and spending. I was laying waste my powers. I was. I had... Well, I had given away my heart. Does that sound ridiculous? No. I wasn't reacting to anything anymore. All sorts of things were going on around me. Anyway, they seemed to be. But none of it interested me. None of it concerned me. None of it even touched me. I was... I was all alone. All alone by myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you really understand? I think so. It's very important to me that somebody should. Of course. Have you ever felt that way? Of course. What did you do about it? Waited for it to pass. And did it? Sooner or later. How soon? How much later? Sometimes sooner. Sometimes later. Tell me something. Did it ever... You know, get worse? I never went mad, if that's what you mean. I guess that is what I mean. How did you know that was what I meant? I just knew. But how? How did you know? I'm human, too. Oh, yes, of course you are, but how... Ah, well, never mind. Look, I I'm very glad you're going to be around. You're the first person I've been able to talk to about this... this condition I find myself in. I've been shy, embarrassed. You know what I mean? Yes. I've been so darn... Not lonely, worse than that. Alone. I'd given my heart away. A sordid boon. Yes. Yes. This sea that bears her bosom to the moon. These winds that will be howling at all hours. And are upgathered now like sleeping flowers. Like sleeping flowers. For this. For everything. We're out of tune. Out of tune. Yes, out of tune. It moves us not. Great God, I'd rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn. So might I, standing on some pleasant lee, have glimpses that would make me less forlorn. Have sight of Proteus rising from the sea. Or hear old Triton blow his wreathed horn. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Listen, do, do you know what I'd like to have? What? A horse. A horse? Yeah, I'd like to get up in the morning and throw some tack on a horse and just start off. Could you find me a horse? Yeah, I could do that. Yes. I'll find you a horse. The horse felt good under me. I breathed in the crisp, fresh air. Looked around me at the trees and the wildflowers that grew by the side of the road. Then, as though it had been waiting for me and for this moment, there lay a field of white daisies. A huge field of daisies. Almost an acre, it seemed to me. All white with yellow centers. Swaying a little, stretching a little toward the sun. Looking so... Beautiful, so uselessly beautiful that I... I cried. For the first time in heaven knows how long I cried. I sat there on my horse and cried. It must have been several minutes before my tears stopped and my eyes cleared. But when they did, I saw with hardly any surprise... a young girl standing in the center of that field... Of fluttering daisies. Sudden beauty can do that to us. Particularly beauty that has no purpose and no price. Beauty that cannot be purchased or possessed. That is simply presented to us by God or by nature. Which may eventually turn out to be one and the same thing. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. 
Try to imagine a world where all the daisies have gone and are never coming back. Where every sunset is dimmed and discolored by smoke. Where the grass is brown and the trees are thin. Where all our small wild animals have starved because their earth is covered completely with paved roads and parking lots. Can you imagine it? It frightened me. Yes, actually frightened me. A grown man sitting astride a horse, crying. Crying at the sight of a field of daisies and a young girl. She looked to be about 17, looking up at the sky. What was happening to me? Was this the breakdown I'd so long feared? Was I suffering some sort of collapse? I turned my horse around and walked him back to the house. The next day, I asked my newly acquired manservant to saddle up my horse once again. Uh, do you know a place near here, a few miles from here, where there's an enormous field of white daisies? Daisies grow wild wherever they have a mind to. I'd like to have a field of daisies like that. No, it won't stand for transplanting. Oh, I didn't know that. Sometimes they'll stay where you put them. Sometimes they won't. Depends on their mood, I guess. When I saw that, that great horde of daisies and... And then the girl... You saw a girl? She was just standing there, surrounded by flowers. I... I saw her through my tears. Well, aren't you going to say anything? What should I say? Aren't you going to ask me why I was crying? No. Good, because I don't know why I was crying. I see. I wasn't prepared for anything like that. I came on them so unexpectedly. And there were so many of them. There must have been... Millions, millions. They were... They were like a vision. Yes, a vision. Your horse is ready. When you see a vision, you... Well, something happens. Something's bound to happen, don't you think? I should think so. I mean, you... You fall on your knees, or you... Or you shout out loud, or you praise God, or you... You cry. You cry. And that's what I did. I cried. I didn't know I was going to cry. The last thing in the world I expected was that I'd cry. And then... The girl standing there. Looking up at the sky. Hey, you want a leg up? Uh, what's that? I said, do you want a leg up? Can I help you mount? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. I, uh... I don't know when I'll be back. It wasn't the same. The depression hovered over me like a black cloud. Not quite as large as before, but just as threatening. I felt the gnawing anxiety in the pit of my stomach as the horse trotted down the dirt road with the overhanging trees. I was taking the same path I followed the day before. And now I knew it was the wide field of daisies I was looking for. Like a grail. Just up ahead, beyond the little white deserted church. That was where I'd find it. Just ahead. Just ahead. I reined in my horse and searched wildly. Where were they? My daisies. My field of daisies. Where are you? Where are you? Where? What's the matter, mister? Uh, what? Something wrong. Where? Where are they? Where are what? I, I was here yesterday, and there was a big field. There's a field right over there. But there were daisies growing in it yesterday, all, all over it. What happened to them? I don't know. You, you remember them, don't you? I don't know if I do. But you must have seen them. You, you, were, you were standing right in the middle of them. Yesterday? Yesterday morning. What time? Uh, about, about ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. I was in school. No, no. You were here. I saw you. I was not here. I... Well, actually, I wasn't in school. I was home. You sure? I guess I know where I was. Why weren't you in school? Because I didn't feel like going. That's why. Why didn't you feel like going? I don't have to tell you. No, you don't. It's none of your business. That's right. It's nobody's business but my own. I didn't go to school because I was... 
I was... Miserable. No, sick. I was sick. No. Miserable. Absolutely miserable. Yes. How did you know? You didn't want to be with other people. You didn't want to face them. How? How did you know? Why didn't you want to face them? Well, because... They'd know how miserable you felt just by looking at you. They'd know. That's part of it. And they'd know why. That's the other part of it. I don't understand you at all. I never even saw you before. I don't know your name. So how does it happen you know all these things about me? I have no idea. My mother doesn't know. My father doesn't know. So how do you... I just do, that's all. Listen, you're still miserable, aren't you? Never mind, I know you are. You think the whole world has stopped, don't you? You think it'll never start up again. Not for you. For other people, maybe, but not for you. How do you... Never mind how I know. I know. Well, let me tell you something. The world hasn't stopped forever. It'll start up again. When? When will it? About... About four o'clock this afternoon... I stayed out almost all day. Everything seemed not pleasant exactly, but not unpleasant either. It simply was. It's hard to describe it, and and I find I don't want to describe that day. Describing it might spoil it, and I wouldn't do that for anything in the world, because it was one of the best days of my entire life. I reached my house in time to have a drink before dinner, and that was the end of my almost perfect day. You! You there, get down off that horse. What? Why? What's the matter? I got a few things to say to you. Well, do you want to come inside? I can say what I've got to say right here. Well, well, please do. Please say it, whatever is on your mind. What are you trying to do to that girl? What girl? You know what girl. Oh, you, you How mean... How many girls do you know in Ungerville? I don't know any. I, I met one girl once this morning. What'd you do to her? I didn't do anything. You hypnotized her. What are you talking about? I wouldn't hypnotize anybody. I wouldn't know how. Well, you did something. We, we had a little talk, that's all. Five, ten minutes. And what did you say to her? What difference does it make what I said? She thinks you're some kind of god. That's what difference. Well, I didn't say anything to make her think I was a god. We just talked. A, a friendly conversation. That's all it was. Are you some kind of a magician? Is that it? <laughs> no. She says you know everything that goes on in people's minds. But I, I don't. I never said I did. Well, she said so. She said it to me. She's saying it to everybody. It's all over town. Now, you better get out of Ungerville, mister. It ain't healthy for you around here. But I, I haven't done anything. You've done plenty. You take my advice and you get out. I haven't. I haven't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't for the world. Want me to take your horse to the stable? What? Oh, what's that? Want me to rub him down? Oh, oh, yes, the horse. Yes, yes, uh, cool him out. Listen, do you, do you know what your wife said just now? Did you hear her? Part of it. Well, all I did, this, uh, this young girl, all I did, I, I could see she was unhappy, and I... And I said as much, and she said, yes, it was true. And I said, well, don't be too unhappy, because it won't last. It'll stop after a while, and you'll be happy again. And, and she said, when? When will it stop? And I said, I said, about four o'clock this afternoon. That's all I said. Why did you say it, do you think? Why, I don't know. I just, I just said it. It was the first thing that came to my mind. Why do you think it came to your mind? I don't know. I suppose I wanted to make her feel better or something. How do I know why I said it? It just seemed to be the right thing to say. Oh, I see. And now she thinks she's telling people I'm a god or something. Anyway, that's what your wife said. Your wife accused me of being a magician, some kind of weirdo, a freak. She told me to get out of town. I heard you. Shall I cool the horse out now, sir? If he needs it. I, I brought him home at a slow walk. Is that the girl? Yes. I want to talk to you. Look, what have you been saying about me around town? Why, nothing. Except that you were wonderful. You didn't tell anybody I was a god or a magician or anything like that? Oh, I don't think so. I may have said you were like a god or like a magician, and you are. I'm not. And you could get me into a lot of trouble going around saying those things. I will. 
wouldn't do that. Well, you may have already done it. How could I have? When you did such a wonderful thing for me. I didn't do anything for you. But you did. Don't you want to hear about it? I'd like very much to hear about it. You remember this morning? When you said I was miserable. I didn't know myself that I was miserable till you said it. I kind of knew, but I didn't know what, I didn't want to admit it. All right. So what? And then you said that by four o'clock this afternoon I wouldn't be miserable anymore. And by four o'clock I wasn't. That's all? That's everything. At a quarter to four, I met my boyfriend and we made up our fight. And I was happy again. That's it? That's the whole thing? The thing is, you knew. When I was talking to you, I thought I'd never be happy again as long as I lived. But you knew that wasn't true. I didn't have to be very bright to know that. But at four o'clock, you knew about four o'clock. A guess, a wild guess. Oh, no, you knew. You absolutely knew. And I'm so grateful to you. Don't be, don't be. Oh, but I am. And I, I wanted to do something for you. So I went over to where you saw the daisies. You know, the field... And I asked the farmer about the daisies, and he said he cut them down. Cut them down? The whole field? He's going to plant alfalfa or something. Well, it's getting on for dinner time, so I'd better go on home. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Probably. Good. I'll be looking forward to it. Me too. At least I think so. Uh, what, what about the horse, sir? Uh, oh, what about him? Oh, well, just, just rub him down and give him a good bran mash. He's had quite a day. And so have I. Okay. Come on now. Hey, hey, wait a second. What, what do you think of all this? Hmm? Oh, what? All this falderall. About the girl, me... What your wife said about the talk around town. Well, could be one of several things. Or a combination of things. Could be mere coincidence that you said four o'clock to the girl and she reconciled with her boyfriend at that hour. Or it could be that she put the idea into her head so that when four o'clock arrived, she made the reconciliation possible. Or... Yes? Or? Or what? Or it's possible that a true telepathy exists between you and this girl. An actual meeting of the minds. In which case... Yes? I'd take my wife's advice if I were you. And get out of town. We've all heard of empathy. It is not the same as sympathy. One may empathize, that is, feel another's pain, without feeling sympathy for it. Actors do this all the time, and it is one of the fundamentals of their art. But our hero is not an actor. He is an unhappy man who has gone off to try and alleviate his own suffering. Feeling the suffering of another may be nature's response to his need I'll be back shortly with our concluding act. Telepathy between lovers is not uncommon. Telepathy between mother and child, not at all rare. But telepathy between two strangers who have met purely by chance, though not unheard of, is exceptional. If telepathy is really the motivating force behind our story, well, listen to the concluding act and decide for yourself. I woke next morning with the same despondency hanging about my shoulders like a heavy shawl. I took a different path this time to avoid the field now shorn of its daisies. Perhaps I didn't belong in Ungerville. Perhaps coming here was going to solve nothing, only complicate everything. I turned my horse into a field... A barren, ordinary sort of field. And then... Then it happened. An enormous flock of tiny birds rose from the stubble. 
and such birds. What beauty, some, some sort of fish with shiny black heads and breasts of brilliant pink. A huge flock of them all rising and flying together. I held my breath. Oh. Hi, mister. Hi there. What? Who? Hi. Oh, it's, it, it's you. Yeah, it's me. Uh, did you see them, all those birds? I didn't see any birds. Well, I did. The minute my horse stepped into the field, they, they flew up from the ground, hundreds of them. One second there was nothing to be seen, and the next, hundreds of these tiny birds in the air. I, I think they must have been rose-breasted grosbeaks. I don't think we have any of those around here. I suppose they were migrating. Not around here. Well, maybe they lost their way, made a mistake. That can happen. Hey, look here. What is it? Is this one of your birds? Well, let's see it. Hand it over. Is it dead? Now, this is one of them, all right. No, I, I don't think it's dead. I think... I think maybe it got tired, or maybe it flew into something, got a shock. Will it die? No. No, I don't think so. I'm afraid. I think if you were to take it home with you, keep it warm and, and talk to it a little, it will live. You really think so? I really think so. Then what do I do with it? Then you, you take it outdoors in the warm sun, and you let it lie on your hand for a while. And then what? Then if, if it flutters its wings, well, then you lift your hands up a little higher, about, about as high as your head. And then what? Then the bird will fly away. To be with the other birds? Yes, where it belongs. When will it happen? When will it fly away? Yes. At two o'clock this afternoon. Really? Or three. One or the other. I think I'd better take it home now. Yes, you'd better. I walked my horse back home very slowly. I had no idea why I'd answered the girl's questions the way I did. My knowledge of birds was minimal. And how to care for an ailing one was nil. But the concern I saw in her eyes... Her free and ardent desire to be of help to something more helpless than herself. I simply said the first sensible words that came to mind. Through with your ride so soon? Yes. Beautiful day. I, uh, I ran into that young girl again. Oh? Did you? I started across a barren field, reduced to stumps of clover or grain or something, and... The, and a great mass of little birds flew up right in front of me. They'd been resting in the stubble, I suppose. Mm. Feeding, probably. They were incredibly beautiful. They must have been migrating and gotten off course. The girl found one left behind. She, she thought it might be dead, but I held it and its body was still warm. And I thought I could detect a faint, fast heartbeat. So I told her I thought maybe it had run into something and got a shock. Well, yeah, that's possible. So I said, take it home, keep it warm, and, and talk to it. And after a while, take it outside on the palm of your hand, and if it flutters its wings, hold it up high, and it'll fly away. Uh-huh. Now, why did I say all that? I don't know if that'll happen. For all I know, the bird is dead by now, died before she got it home. Why do I just say whatever comes into my mind lately? I just blurt it out without stopping to think. Just blurt it out. I... I tell you, something's happening to me. Something I don't understand at all, and, and I don't much like it either. I sat slumped on the front porch. Why did I come here? What had I thought to find? If anything, the mess in my head was more disorderly than ever. Then I saw the girl running up the front walk. It happened! It happened! Just the way you said it would, it happened. What? what? What is it? The bird. I did what you said, and it happened. The bird's all right? It flew away to be with the others. Why, why that's marvelous. Isn't it? It's just marvelous. I'm very glad for you. Oh, no. You did it. Just you. You did it. No, no, wait. I took it home, and everybody said it was dead. Even my father, and he's supposed to be so smart. He said it was dead. I should throw it in the ash can. I got so mad I wanted to kill him. But I took the bird and wrapped it 
in a piece of flannel left over from a nightgown I had when I was little. And I petted its head very softly, and I kept talking to it, saying, you know, love things, sweet things, things I thought would encourage it, you know? I think I do. That went on for, I don't know, an hour, I guess. More, maybe. Then I thought I felt its head move a little bit, so I took it out in the sun. This was a little after 12, so the sun was straight up, practically. And I kept talking and touching its head. And then you know what? What? Its whole body gave a little wriggle all over. And it looked at me. It looked right at me. You don't say. I almost cried. I got this lump in my throat. Of course you did. And I waited. And I waited and I talked some more encouraging things. Like you would to a baby, you know. And then it happened. What happened? What you said would happen. What did I say? You said it would ruffle its feathers. And it did. It did. And then what? And I lifted it up. As high as I could over my head. And it flew. My goodness. First, it flew to the branch of a tree. And it perched there, looking around. And then it flew off to join the others. How wonderful. Yes, it was. It was wonderful. It happened just the way you said it would. I wasn't sure it would happen just that way. But it did. It happened just like that. Just like you said. Well, now, that, you know... That's when I knew I loved you. What? I watched the bird flying off, and I knew for certain that I love you. And will always love you. Now, wait. Wait. Only you. Forever and ever. Hold on. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. I'm saying I love you. I worship you. And I want to belong to you and spend my life with you and never be away from you for a minute. Now, stop it. You stop it this minute. Just stop that kind of talk. Why should I? Because I tell you to. No, look. Not not because I tell you to. Because... Because it's wrong. It's, It's inappropriate. Why is it inappropriate? Little girl, how... How old are you? Seventeen. And how old am I? I don't know. I'm 62, my dear. I don't care. But you must care. And I must make you care. You're just beginning to live, and I'm, I'm beginning to contemplate the end of living. Oh, no, you're not. You'll never be dead. Oh, not today. Probably not this year or the year after. But some year after that, if anyone takes the trouble to look, I won't be there. I don't believe you. But you must. It's very important that you should. I don't see why. I know you don't, because you're very young. And you've lived so little. You don't know much about life or living. Or anything at all. You mean I'm stupid? Oh, no, not not stupid. Just simple-minded. That goes with being young. I think everybody at age 17 is simple-minded. And is that why you don't want me? (sighs) Maybe it is. You're terrible. You're a terrible person. I know. I hate you. I never want to see you again. And you shouldn't. You should take all that love and sweetness you have in your heart and give it to someone who will accept it with joy and hold it close and make his life around it. That's what you should do. I know somebody who wants me. Good. Good. As a matter of fact, he's waiting for me right now. Good. So, goodbye. Goodbye. Have a nice life. You too. Oh, dear. Dear me. How's your appetite now? Uh, how's that? I brought you your sandwich. Oh. Just, uh, just set it down. All right. What do you, uh, what do you make of all that's happened here? Uh, the bird, by the way, recovered and flew off. (laughs) And on the strength of that, the young girl fancied herself in love with me. There's no doubt there was an affinity between you. Some might call it telepathy. I prefer the word 
affinity. But why? Why should there have been? Why did I come here in the first place? Please, I, I'd, I'd like your opinion. You know how Ungerville got its name, don't you? I've no idea. From the Danish word ung, it means young. I think you were looking for your youth. Instead, I found my age. Is that it? No. No, well, that's not it. You're a man of intelligence, sir. And a man of honor. So you never forgot your advanced age. Nevertheless, you were able to recall the moods, the impetuosities, and the infatuations of youth. Very few people who are grown can do that. I don't know when it is they start to forget, but somewhere along the way, most of them do. And this is very hurtful to the young. Oh, I think you're to be congratulated, sir. And admired. That you can remember how difficult it is to be young. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You made me feel better. Well, there's a car pulling up in front of the house. So there is. And the lady is getting out. You're right. Darling. It's my wife. Darling. How are you? I, I'm fine. I'm just fine. How, how in the world did you find me? Oh, I asked around. We drove through Ungerville on our honeymoon. Don't you remember? That was 30 years ago. How, how could I remember? Well, I remembered. You said then you'd like to come back here someday. Remarkable. So I had sort of a sixth sense, a kind of telepathic message. Whatever you want to call it. A meeting of the minds. <laughs> Sit down, sweetheart, and, and share this sandwich with me. Then we'll go home. I've got a lot to tell you. I doubt that there's anyone beyond the age of 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 who does not now and then look back to and long for the early days when everything seems possible, and even simple, even certain. One small compensation that comes with the ensuing years is the knowledge that everything is not. I'll be back shortly. Those of advanced years who have not learned that almost nothing is simple or certain are the ones to be pitied. They are the ones who remain eternally infantile and unsatisfied. A burden to everyone, and most of all, to themselves. Pity them we must, but let's face it, they are a nuisance. Our cast included Michael Tolan, Terry Keene, Robert Dryden, and Amanda Plummer. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar.